Today will come to order. Okay. Right. Today, we begin the markup of two bipartisan bills. H.R. 4775, the Ozone Standards Imp Implementation Act, and H.R. 4979, the Applied Nuclear Technology Development Act of 2006. Per normal practice, we'll only hear opening statements this afternoon. Then we'll recess until 10 a.m. tomorrow when we'll reconvene to compete the, bill, the subcommittee markup. H.R. 4775 is a bill that I introduced. I'd like to thank my original co-sponsors, bipartisan co-sponsors, Chairman Flores, Latta, Cuellar, Leader McCarthy, and Whip Scalise. We believe this bill creates a path to improve air quality without harming job creation and economic growth. It also provides long overdue reforms to the process by which EPA sets and implements national air pollution standards. EPA's new ozone standards will impose major compliance costs on state and local governments, as well as threaten jobs in my home state and other areas that are not in attainment currently. The 2008 ozone standards are challenging enough, and now EPA has made it worse by waiting seven years to finalize the implementation rules. This means states have barely started moving forward with achieving the 2008 standards. To make the situation more daunting, EPA chose to finalize a brand new ozone rule a few months ago and also require compliance with both standards at the same time. The new ozone standard, 70 parts per billion, is so low that in some regions it is close to background levels, making compliance extremely difficult. Even EPA admits that it cannot identify the control technologies that would get all of America into compliance. At the same time, the agency also admits the new standard would not improve air quality much more than you get under the 2008 ozone standards. In other words, it's a lot of pain with little gain. HR 4775 will allow states to fully implement the 2008 standards before imposing new paperwork and planning requirements for the new standard. Ozone has already declined by about one-third since 1980, and the 2008 standards and our existing regulations are already in place. They will ensure continued improvements for the next eight years until the new standard is implemented. This bill also includes some overdue reforms to the 46-year-old process for national ambient air quality standards for ozone. EPA routinely misses the five-year mandatory deadline review needed for new ozone standards. Let's give EPA the time they need. They clearly need this time. This bill changes that interval from five to 10 years. No more missed deadlines for the EPA, which means stable expectations in the market. This bill also helps EPA by making them release the guidance to meet a new rule at the same time they put the new rule out. They were clearly overwhelmed by having to write the rules for the 2008 ozone standards while having to work on new standards looming five years later. By tying new standards together with the rules to achieve those standards, we strengthen EPA and the Clean Water Act. We'll also consider H.R. 4979, the Advanced Nuclear Technology Development Act of 2016, sponsored by my colleagues Bob Latta and Mr. McInerney. This bill will provide certainty for innovators in nuclear technology by requiring the development of a regulatory framework for new technologies. Currently, NRC's outmoded regulatory approval process stands as a barrier to those promising technologies that would create jobs and increase our national security. The Advanced Nuclear Technology Development Act also requires the DOE and the NRC to enter into a memorandum of understanding to maintain technical expertise. 
modeling and simulation capabilities and scientific facilities to license advanced reactors. Federal government agencies should collaborate where appropriate to reduce uncertainties for the bright future of nuclear science, nuclear scientists, and entrepreneurs. Nuclear industry completes, competes in the global market. HR 4979 will assure the United States will remain a leader in innovation and technology. I thank Congressman Latta for his leadership on this issue. HR 4775 and 4979 seek a balanced approach to protect the public against risks and ensure federal agencies do not impose unnecessary barriers to economic growth. Both these bills strike that balance. I urge members to support them. And now I'll yield five minutes in six minutes to the gentleman from New Jersey, the head of the ranking member of the full committee, Mr. Pallone.